Hey everyone, welcome to the CNCF webinar uh, where we are talking about how to generate VEX documents based on application behavior using uh, Cubescape. Now there might be a lot of words you haven't heard before yet, so I'm going to explain the whole. So bear with me in the next uh, minutes. So welcome here. So who am I? Just a few words. I'm uh, Ben. Uh, a co-founder at uh, NCTO at Armo, uh, but relate, as how I'm related to Cubescape, I'm uh, uh, one of the maintainers uh, uh, and big, uh, one of the project initiators uh, of Cubescape. Uh, we'll talk about a little bit further on what is Cubescape. Um, I'm also coming from a security background uh, uh, before coming into uh, uh, the cloud native world, if I could talk uh, tell it like, uh, this way. And in general, I love innovation, I love innovative things, and I love security. So this is about me. So uh, what is Cubescape? Cubescape is a Kubernetes uh, uh, security uh, uh, project. Uh, we started Cubescape from uh, uh, two, two and a half years ago um, by enabling users to scan their clusters, their uh, YAML files, their HAM charts, from um, security uh, uh, misconfigurations, security potential security problems based on NSA's um, hardening guide, and the project evolved into a general uh, Kubernetes security pro posture project, which is uh, you know meet, can meet you in different phases of your uh, workflow. It can uh, it meets you as I, we started from the Kubernetes runtime side where we are running a, a, a cluster and workloads, but we are also supporting also the left side. So the dev development side, you can create even in your uh, um, in your uh, Visual Studio code, we can find uh, potential configuration problems from a security perspective or find vulnerabilities. You can embed Cubescape into your CI CD processes. Uh, you can monitor your cluster. And in general, it became a Kubernetes security posture tool finding configuration issues uh, uh, in your cluster, finding uh, image vulnerabilities, finding uh, uh, different uh, aspects through eBPF in your cluster, which you know you need to, to fix. So um, just before we are going further, CV shock and 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 you know if you don't know what is CV shock, then you know uh, uh, you might need to a little bit more explanation from us for uh, to, to that. So one of the best definitions I've heard uh, uh, up until now that CV shock is actually a state of total, total helplessness when facing the overwhelming list of CVs returned by the vulnerability scanners. So this is true. I uh, completely completely sign on this. Uh, uh, you know when you know we are working with uh, vulnerability scanners. Uh, finding vulnerabilities in our container images in our clusters, uh, their results uh, most of the time are overwhelming. Um, you have we have tons of false positives of uh, of different vulnerabilities existing in packages inside our containers, but most of the, actually the, what we are looking for is is to know whether these vulnerabilities can be exploited by an external attacker or in what ways they uh, they can be exploited. We don't know that, so therefore. We are getting a bunch of uh, results and we have hard time managing them. So just to gi uh, give you a feeling uh, about what are the uh, uh, different vulnerabilities uh, and what how what are the accounts. So we took a few uh, for the sake of this presentation, we took a, f a few well-known applications, containers and applications. I guess you know most of them, and you can see that they are today uh, uh, delivering these these uh, uh, container images are shipped with uh, tens, if not nearly hundreds of, of vulnerabilities by the time you're deploying them in, in your cluster. And this is like something that obviously vulnerabilities are not good and we need to keep them, limit them. But also it's, it's sometimes very, very hard to, to, to limit them and fix them or, or wait for fixes from, uh, from external vendors, like in this ca case of these images. So sometimes it's, it, it, it's, it's very hard to manage them Therefore, it is very important to understand which of them are really posing a threat or risk to, to your environment and which of them are not. We at uh, uh, Cubescape, we started to 
work on a feature um, a year ago, a little bit more than a year ago, which we called reachability. So reachability is a super interesting feature because we've noticed that that most of the vulnerabilities that are returned by the scanners are belonging to packages, software packages inside your container images that are not even opened during the runtime. So this means that the, when the container image is used and running, those pieces of software are not load, even loaded into the memory. This means that they are cannot be exploited directly by an attacker. This means that when the software is running and accepting packets from the outside world through a network, these software packages are not running. And therefore, we devised uh, a way to uh, differentiate between um, vulnerabilities that are belonging to packages which are not run uh, in inside an image, inside the not inside the image, inside the container. Sorry, um, and um, and vulnerabilities that are belonging to software packages that are running inside uh, uh, your container. And the way we do it is, uh, Cubescape itself uses another CNCF project called Inspector Gadget. Inspector Gadget, if you don't know them, uh, you should. It's an EPPF project, uh, I think one of the best uh, around, and they give us visibility over what's happening inside workloads, what uh, what, hap what is happening inside the workloads and between the kernel. So if you have a pod which is running, uh, we can use Inspector Gadget in order to trace uh, what kind of system calls the uh, pods is, are, are doing. And, that, and in, if we are looking at what kind of system calls they are doing against the kernel, Inspector Gadgets helps us to understand what files are opened during the runtime uh, of the pod. So if we know what files are opened uh, and we know during our vulnerability scanning, uh, we get to an S-bomb which we are generating using Gripe, uh, we understand what software packages are inside that container image using uh, this tracing information about what uh, files were touched by the pod inside the container uh, helps us to understand which software packages uh, were used and opened during the runtime of a pod. This helps us to, uh, to differentiate between software packages that are dormant or software packages that are actually used during the runtime of an image. Um, and using this SBOM differentiation, we can, you know, only cross-check those uh, uh, packages that are used in runtime against the vulnerability scanner and understand and mark those vulnerabilities are what we called relevant or reachable vulnerabilities. These are the vulnerabilities that are actually, you know, can be exploited or, uh, at all and in the uh, during the runtime of uh, of a container image. And this is a very, very big difference. So just to, to, to give you, you know, high level understanding, given a Redis image, we, you know, we, we tried during the uh, preparation of the data of this uh, talk, um, we found that there are more than 150 uh, uh, vulnerabilities in the Redis uh, image scan. But if we are, uh, subtracting from them the, all those who are belonging to software packages that are not loaded into memory. As it turns out, we have less than, if I re recall correctly, less than, less than 40 or 30 uh, vulnerabilities. This means like a, a 20 or more percent, uh, a, a reduction to 20 or more percent, like reduction by at least 80 percent. And this brings me to, uh, uh, to the next uh, uh, point is how to how to pack this information so it, during the you know last year more and more people are talking about a format called vex vex is around for a few years right now and multi, uh, multiple industry organizations are, are are talking about it among them uh, the linux foundation OpenSSF, and also tech security in in, in cncf vex is, stands for vulnerability exchange document and it helps you to uh, explain and give uh, a log about what are the vulnerabilities that really matter in your software product. So it's a, a document format which actually uh, uh, enables you 
to uh, devise a, a, a package that you know you can uh, that you are using in your software delivery and what is a vulnerability that is bound to the same uh, uh, same product and what's the status whether it is something that needs uh, it's fixed it's affected or not affected uh, really so it's something that uh, a vulnerability that matters or doesn't matter and this is something that that, that we are uh, uh, we've been started looking at so how do you get uh, a vex document how do you uh, uh, how do you attain them so that's the hard part so for a long time people were talking about vex and and there are not i wouldn't say that there is a very clear winning standard of how to describe this uh, this document but on the other hand more and more people are are understanding the importance and i think that in the you know it's a prediction by me but but uh, uh in the upcoming years this is going to be more and more important just like sbom become a standard uh, delivery uh, uh, artifact for software renders vex is most likely will become as well because somehow software renders will be will need to able to communicate vulnerabilities to their uh, users and but the problem is that it's uh, it, it is very tedious and hard to maintain such a uh, uh, a document you know every time that there is a new, new vulnerability exposure somewhere uh, in some one of your uh, um, dependencies as a software render uh, you have to start to evaluate whether this is the, this vulnerability affects your outputs or, or, or end product or not and this is a very tedious uh, uh, and a um, lot of effort involving a uh, job to do therefore um, I th we thought of the, you know, the best solution for that would be to start to, uh, to generate invex based on uh, you know automatically and without human involvement, and therefore we we devised a way in Cubescape to uh, to generate uh, vex documents automatically for application behavior using our reachability uh, capability, which uh, on one hand we are able to tell what are the vulnerabilities inside a container image, on the other hand we are able to say which are the among those vulnerabilities which are those who are not loaded into memory therefore we can mark them in vex document as as vulnerabilities that are not affecting really the uh, uh, the product and this gives us an uh, automatically a way uh, uh, of generating good vex documents so in it, it started uh, uh nearly a half year ago uh there was a, a discussion uh, with the, the open ssf team uh, at Linux Foundation about the importance of the ideas around it and, and among the way came up the idea of, of Cubescape supporting uh, the production of, of, of this format and uh, uh, we started to manage it th this project uh, immediately uh, you know I hear I need uh, you, you can see from the ticket that there were other contributors uh, uh, to this project outside of the original Cubescape uh, team and uh, you know we started uh, supporting in in a, in a beta version like two months ago I think um, not, not more than two months ago. So as part of of, of this uh, uh, webinar, I want to show to you how it works. So let's go there. So. Um, you can see I'm going to do a live demo here, or at least a recorded live demo. So I hope that everything works. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, install a Cubescape operator inside my Kubernetes cluster using Helm. Um, as you can see, I've needed to turn on the VEX generation as a, as a capability. This is something uh, that right now uh, we need we need to uh, 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 enable explicitly during uh, you know the the testing uh, of the of the feature and when we see that that it will work uh, stable for everyone we'll enable it by default for every uh, uh, every use case so you can see that still my uh, my containers are still uh, starting up. Cubescape is, the, you know, in the starting up phase. So let's wait a second for that. So 
So as the, the pods are nearly there, they're nearly running. In the meantime, I'm also starting up. Yeah, everything is running here. So I'm starting up a demo deployment and deploying an Nginx from the Kubernetes examples. Uh, what will happen right now is uh, this container starts up. Let's check this out in K9S. So you can see that there are two Nginx pods are running in the, in this uh, uh, example. So what's happening is now that during this time, uh, the node agent component in the Cubescape operator, uh, what it does, it starts to uh, uh, monitor the application behavior, the trace the application behavior, as I told you before, uh, um, and is uh, uh, looking into how uh, the Nginx deployment behaves. In the very same time, where uh, doing the node agent is monitoring, uh, actually the kubelin here, this pod is um, this one is uh, uh, creating an S bomb for the Nginx uh, image running inside this pod. So it is uh, just for you to see. So as you can see, it's a pretty old Nginx, it's Nginx 1.14.2. And it, it will must have a, a lot of uh, uh, vulnerabilities. So during this time, um, uh, while we are monitoring, you know, you can already start to uh, to check whether we we already have the VEX uh, document uh, for uh, for this uh, uh, component. So let's wait a few seconds for it to come up. So we are watching and waiting. While we are waiting, I'm just like giving another explanation. So. Uh, cubes. Oh, here it comes. So, yeah, for both pods, uh, we got a VEX document. So, um, let me stop uh, here. Uh, um, so, what you see here is actually um, Kubernetes object. Cubescape emits all its uh, scan results as a Kubernetes object. You can talk to them uh, through. Uh, um, through uh, the Kubernetes API and get them. So just for you to show you if I want to try to get this object here. Let's try to get it as a JSON file. And yeah, here it is. So what you see here is the row VAX document. Um, you can see here already here, I just saw, show you that you have here, uh, for example, a CVE, uh, that when we're looking at the impact statement, which is one of the main things, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in a VEX file, also you can see the status. So the status of this CVE in this image is that it's not affected, it means that in our case, vulnerable component is not loaded into the memory, we, as I just, we, you know, we are giving this information to you. But the question is, okay, that this is a hard thing and what you can do with it. So uh, as you know, we are going forward, uh, more and more tools will, who are managing vulnerabilities will be able to ingest uh, VEX documents. But I want to, to show you uh, to already how to uh, use that. But even beforehand, uh, let's, I've just emitted this JSON into a file uh, showing you here, a few interesting things. So if I want to check in this JSON file, how many vulnerabilities are what we call affected, you can see that only four of the vulnerabilities in, in, in this con uh, container image are affected during our tests and to check out whose are not affected, how many of them are not affected. You can see that 392 Vulnerabilities are not uh, part of uh, software packages that are not loaded into the memory, and only four of them are. So it, you can see that it's a huge, huge gain. 
because instead of 396 vulnerabilities that you would need to manage, you have only four. So that is about the demo. For your consideration, think about uh, how do you think that this, this can help CNCF project? Uh, how, you know, how this can drive VEX adoption and to go away, okay, I will be really help well, it would be very helpful if you could, uh, you know, give feedback on Cubescape and Vex, you know, use our, uh, uh, use our CNCF Slack channel uh, or open an issue. We'd love it to be in contact if this is something that interests you. So thank you very much.